Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. Um, I'm bringing you a past master uh, study today. It's a study after George Ines. Uh, the painting uh, he did was called Sunrise. The size of my study is 7 by 10 inches and this um, actually, uh, I have put this video up before as a blog post on my blog. Um, but this was at the time where I wasn't uh, engaging with YouTube and I don't know, it's a pretty special little painting and I know um, a lot of people weren't finding their way to my website or my blog and you know, I'm cool with that. One of the, the hallmarks of our age is this uh, Oh, so many things are pulling at us, so many things are asking our attention, and many times it's this um, path of least resistance. In fact, almost always with people and nature and animals, everything <laughs> moves with the path of least resistance. So I know uh, if something's on YouTube, more people will see it, and uh, yeah, that's just cool. That's fine. I, I don't really mind either way, but I did want this painting to, um, to get to those of you that... Uh, hadn't maybe seen it on my blog so I'm redoing I'm redoing the audio the painting itself is the painting and um, I'm really pleased with it it's really cool it's actually on consignment in the US right now should be going to some uh, some sort of show oh I don't know sometime next year we'll see I'll keep you appraised if you're in the US it'd be on the East Coast Boston or Philadelphia or someplace like that anyway um, I really happy with it and one of my most popular videos on YouTube has been a study of the same painting I did that was a 5x7 um, that somebody popped into a um, a playlist they made on tonalism um, and I think I've had you know 1500 2000 views on that and it's just an okay painting but it happened to be in the right place at the right time so people are seeing it and uh, that's all good and that's so much of our lives is like that right place right time um, but one of the things I like about paintings is even if they're not in the right place in my time they eventually will find a right place I have faith if a uh, painting is good it will find its place in the world I may not be I might, probably won't be on my schedule um, and I'm not one of these artists that's, you know, hankering for fame or anything. Uh, some people uh, here in New Zealand seem to think I'm I'm famous already, but I, I really don't think so. But whatever, it doesn't matter to me if I am or I'm not. Uh, these things are not as important to me as making um, good paintings. And so um, we get to the reason for doing the master studies, as I've uh, talked about time and time again. They uh, really uh, forced me to stretch out and do things that I wouldn't normally do and also things that aren't really uh, don't have any sort of basis uh, with a photo this is another thing many of my works start with some sort of photographic inspiration I'm aware of many of the traps of photos the the main trap with photos you got to watch out for is these these focal links a lot of the extreme wide angle focal links you won't see anything like that in any sort of old painting because human beings don't see with a wide angle you know we see with a fairly restricted field of vision compared to you know um, something that, that really pans out and gets a big bunch of the uh, the landscape um, so that's one thing uh, now of course there too uh, it's arbitrary isn't it like you could crop any scene to get a panorama you know, I don't know if you know that, but you can, and um, so it's sort of relative, but uh, there are artifacts that are created by the lens that are distortions, I guess would be a better word than artifacts, um, that uh, will, you could just copy them right into the painting, that's one thing. Um, the other thing, of course, is the extremely restricted uh, color field of most photographs is compared to uh, the amount of colors that our eyes perceive. It's very limited. You can juice things up, and I do. 
Um, but if you're just working with straight standard ordinary photograph, yeah, it's not going to be very exciting. I think, you know, I only see maybe six or seven greens in any photo. Uh, whereas with my visual uh, perception, I can perceive hundreds, you know. I wouldn't say thousands, but hundreds is quite a lot. Anyway, um, so we're wrapping up uh, 2018 here. That's the other reason for me popping this video up. I don't know if I will be... I probably will be getting another one up before the end of the year. I will, so consider this uh, the preamble to the wrap-up. And um, I guess before I get into that, some people have a real hankering to know about uh, the painting I'm doing, so let's talk about that for a few minutes. Um, so this painting is called Sunrise, but it's very golden. A lot of times Sunrise is not as golden as it is like pink and purple, but it can be golden. Um, the thing that's sort of the hallmark of this painting is everything is so vague in it, you know, and that was a real challenge. Like that tree in our foreground, that's vague. Look at this sort of amorphous green shape where it just had little specks of black in it. Um, there's a little figure on the path, <coughs> pardon me, which I'm going to paint in. Um, and then there's these things in the background. It was really, really hard to discern where the actual horizon is, which is one of the hallmarks of Ines. He liked to uh, put multiple horizon lines in his paintings because he was a very, oh, he's a very clever clog, really. He, he thought about these things quite a lot, um, a lot more than me. But uh, I, I, I do take one thing from him I do take is that um, it's good to have your horizon indistinct as possible, like where you have the the sky meet the sea, for example. I try to bring those values very close in line to each other. Um, another thing, of course, all these painting, all the tones in this painting are keyed off of uh, oranges, yellows, the yellows into the greens, and it's a fairly limited palette. We're not getting in any blues, purples. Um, no real grays, cool grays. Everything is warm, earthy. Uh, and uh, that's the other thing I want to talk about with this painting is like, uh, so I'm working on this textured board and I'm um, talking about 2018. And 2017, I had some major uh, revelations with the textured surface. I started out with very heavy texture. And then as the year progressed, I was able to uh, which I love having a texture, but I don't like when the texture interferes with the actual painting. Like, say, you might have a ropey bit of texture that's cutting through one of the elements of your landscape, and it will throw the viewer off. And you can do it, and I have done it, and I've even sold, I've sold plenty of paintings that had that issue. But um, for me, I want a texture, but I want it sort of indistinct, but I want it also real hand done and this this painting is done in that texture and that's one of the reasons why I'm able to pull off a lot of things in these mass these recent spate of master studies that I would have struggled with in the past and so um, 2018 has been just sort of uh, an ongoing progression from 2017 where I started working on the burnt umber and on the textured board but I have my texture there but it's um, and you, there's some videos on YouTube that show my process both my initial texture process and then about three or four months later my um, evolution of that process and I've been halfway tempted to put up a video showing the the final step in that evolution which has been scraping 90 percent of what I do off so I went from a period of time where doing board prep was, you know, five, ten minutes to where I might have a whole half hour to 40 minutes invested in the board prep, uh, both in the layers of gesso, the layers of oil paint, there's a bit of sanding, and now what I do is a lot of scraping with a palette knife to get, um, to get sort of a uniform yet non-uniform surface and uh, I'm so pleased with the uh, um, the texture of the paintings I'm doing now and um, so that's a kind of a subtle thing but you know little things and little little progresses like that really add up to um, you know 
big results. Like if you're passing a painting in a hole and it's got a light on it and you're seeing it from an angle, you don't want the only thing you see to be some big heavy texture. You want to see, oh, this has a texture to it. It's a real thing. That's the other thing. That's the other reason I like the uh, working with the textured panels as opposed to, say, a smooth masonite um, where it would just be my brush strokes or I used to work on these laminated uh, laminated board. It was it was a, a wood veneer laminated onto masonite and uh, a nice surface. And most of the texture of those paintings is being created with the uh, slight grain of the uh, laminate and the um, the brush strokes. And I was very much into that for many many years. And then sort of moving into doing other types of texture uh, to the point where I don't need a laminate because. I don't not I would obliterate any wood texture that was on it anyway. So, um, but this year I'd have to say that's probably my my primary evolution was uh, just scraping down, scraping down, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a little video showing that and uh, and put together a little playlist or something. Um, I haven't really changed my color palette at all this year. I'm very happy with where that's at. Um, and the idea behind a color palette should be that um, you can pull off the kind of things that you want to pull off, you know, uh, with really as few colors on your palette as you need. But uh, I have uh, good logic and good reasons for every color that's on my color palette. And um, I think there's a video about that. I was just uh, responding to a comment someone placed on on that. and. Uh, that hasn't changed. I'm still using those same colors, and uh, this was, uh, you know, this year coming up, 2019 will be my 10th year of uh, oil painting. So uh, this has been a long, um, a long process, a long evolution. I may have started late 2008. So if you hear me refer to 2008 as my first year. Uh, I honestly don't recall. It could have been late 2008 or early 2009, but that's when I uh, decided to start oil painting and uh, took a big break from things like music and um, also, uh, well, I was still going full time as a um, commercial illustrator, so uh, the painting was um, just something I had in my mind that I wanted to do. And uh, initially, I tried to do it with uh, in the computer digitally, only to find that. Uh, well, I'm so glad I didn't pursue that because there's so many ways to do that with artificial intelligence now. It's not even funny. I think it's going to be a little more difficult for AI to pull off the sort of things like I'm doing with the Sines study. Unless, of course, they start examining and analyzing my videos stroke by stroke. Ooh, wait a minute. Hold on here. Maybe I shouldn't put these up. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for joining me today. Like I say, uh, you if you've been uh, following my blog on my website, uh, which is landscapepainter.co.nz, um, you would have seen this video. But hey, you probably thought, wow, this is a pretty cool video if you saw it before. So... It's a good chance for you to see it again uh, with a new bit of uh, diatribe attached. And um, I hope everyone's had, oh, actually, it would be Christmas Day right now in the U.S. It's the day after Christmas here in New Zealand. I hope you've all had a really good holiday season and that you have a super great new year. And um, I, I'll be around uh, this weekend to do one more before the end of the year. Meanwhile, please take good care and stay out of trouble.